I want to dedicate this video to the 19 year old version of me because that kid was obsessed with this motor. The three rotor engine was the holy grail, the pinnacle of what I wanted to put in my two rotor RX-7. And so throughout this entire video, I'm gonna share with you all the different things that make this engine so much different than the two rotor. Why? Why the three rotor? Why is it so a magic. Why, why, is, why is it even a waste of time? You, clearly it's an expensive option now. Let's look at the dimensions, the performance, the packaging, the weight, all of the above as to what is the magic behind the 20B. That's right. You, you clean that floor. Get there nice and... <laughs> he looks so entertained. While he's cleaning, we're going to swap roles for a second. I'm going to be the camera guy. We got to get this damn LS6 off of the engine hoist because we're going to pick that engine up and put it onto, well, uh, an engine stand. And I have used the finest of creativity to solve my LS problems. Hopefully, that's not going to let it fall off on a weird angle. Let's find out. Oh, okay, never mind. That was a bad idea. You've got to be kidding me. I, th I keep thinking I've emptied this thing of coolant and more just keeps coming. <laughs> constant, constant coolant. It's better than one wheel dolly, two wheel dollies. This should do it. Please. Okay, and there we go. We've got an LS6 on its own dollies. Some of the footage you're about to see is taken from the 13B versus LS6. So if you're looking for another sort of comparison between engine swaps, check that video out. The important part is this engine right here. We do want to weigh it. And we do have situational challenges because of wood and everything else being the way it is. So what we're going to do is just gently slide this whole dysfun dysfunctional block backwards. This thing still has most of its oil in it and everything else. So this is a complete running block. It does idle. But we're going to weigh it as is. So you can see this sort of setup. And then, of course, we'll try and compare apples to apples. There we go. In efforts of making the 13B versus LS videos as fair as possible, we wanted to weigh them with the same number of things on that. Of course, it makes the 13B look wonderful. Of course, it should. It's a baby engine. But in this case, we can actually compare real apples to apples with a 13B versus 20B. We just have to get it back to the most comparable standards. You got a lot of random crap on it. We still have the engine hoist, which we'll take off right now. This is for taking the engine apart. Take this off real quick. Let's compare intake manifolds on, turbo on, water systems all on. We do have the clutch on this one, but not on this one. So let's go ahead and take the clutch off of this one. So we weigh apples to apples. Here, off comes the double disc, custom one for the T56. Still got decent meat, a little bit of a little bit of heat on this. All right. The only thing that's left on here that's not on that one is the tile wastegate. If you guys have ever, ever picked up a wastegate, especially made by tile, it's light as hell, so I'm not really even going to waste time with that. We will take the turbo back off of that one and put it back onto this one. I think we're ready to weigh it. Okay, we had to move it out of the way because we were just trying to run around it. Absolute pain in the ass. I put the turbo on the engine <laughs> instead of uh, to the side because it was just weighing it down way too far uh, Off balancing everything I joke about it, but Jesus Christ This is my luck with just trying to get something simple done oil constantly So we're draining the oil just so that you know these numbers do not include this Nasty shit that annoys the crap out of me and does not help my life whatsoever all the oil is gonna be out of it There's coolant somewhere. There's some more coolant in the fucking engine. This is just frustrating as hell, but these numbers do not include oil. I'm going to weigh the 4508 separately, and that is 37.4 pounds. That's pretty healthy, so that doesn't keep trashing <laughs> the rest of my car as I'm trying to measure it. So, 37.4. After some technical difficulties, we're finally in our fifth filming spot and leaving a trail of dead tears and oil in our wake. But we've removed the turbo, we've removed the oil from this engine, so this is actually a pretty apples to apples comparison to the two rotor core. We're gonna have to balance it because the way that this oil pan works, it doesn't let you balance on the oil pan like that. There, what are we seeing? 341. At 340, 
3.6 last time. So this is 341.4. So 341 seems to be the answer at the moment. This won't be too bad. 14 pounds for the intake and throttle body. So each side is 15.6 pounds for the LS6. I'm really curious because even though that isn't the scope of the video, the LS6 weighs 385 pounds. Add the two exhaust manifolds, that's an extra 30 pounds, and it clicks it close to 410. Cranking out my calculator, and really my notes on this, the 20B weighs 341 pounds, the intake manifold, the upper one, weighs 14, and the turbo is 37. So that gives you a total of just shy of 400 pounds. So this is almost identical weight, almost literally the identical weight to the LS6 non-turbo. This motor can kick the LS6's ass in comparison. That's naturally aspirated, even though it has more displacement, this still can make way more horsepower and way more torque. That's just facts. I'm not rotary fanboying. This is just literally a higher performance motor. Obviously, once you start getting into turbocharging LS's, that adds a little bit of weight there, but it really does show that there is a special place in the world for the 20B. I just wanted to compare that, even though it's not the scope of this video, it was getting under my skin wondering the comparison between this one and the LS6. The three rotor in comparison to the two rotor is about, just about over a hundred pound difference. That is literally a hundred pounds more. I've got fuel rails and other things that might add a couple pounds here and there. But if you're wondering the weight difference between a kitted out three rotor versus a kitted out two rotor, turbo and all, you're talking a hundred pounds. Time to put this block up on the engine stand. And you know what's kind of neat is that stand fits right inside of this engine dock the red rocket. Maybe I'm, you guys can put in your own commentary. Jarrett totally missed the sickest shot ever. Damn. Oh, the handle goes up and down. It's kind of dumb. I feel safe. Comfortable. Here we go. There is the star of the hour, the 20B. <laughs> Let's take off uh, the intake manifolds, the oil filter, obviously super important part of this. Let's take off the turbo manifold. This has been nothing but the most trustworthy thing. A lot of people were doubting that you could get away with a T4 flange on a three rotor. I will tell you very quickly that you are wrong. Let's go ahead and open these up. These are 15 millimeter wide, I don't know. So it was when we were rebuilding the three rotor, Elliot from Turbo and made this manifold. And I'm sure for the right price, he would do that for others. But this manifold is what's so good about this three rotor being rebuilt. It is clean, super responsive. Turbo technology has gotten so far that I was able to make more power and have boost it. Lower RPMs, more response, all of the above. It's just a beautiful place for rotary owners to be in and nobody appreciates it at this point. I shouldn't say nobody. The general public doesn't understand. They're running off of like late 1990s theory of how rotor engines work, boost in, apex seals out. Sadly, uh, as even I find those sort of jokes humorous, I really do. It's sad that uh, that actually affects a whole generation of uh, what people think rotor engines are, are and are not. This particular engine here has, I don't know how many thousands of miles. I don't know how much wear and tear. This is still the same housings, irons, uh, a minus one rotor, I think, and different apex seals but this is the same one that took all the abuse from years ago. And not that I was doing it on the cheap, but I was doing it partially just because, hey, you know what? We can always rebuild this engine. We took and reused the housings. And I think that was one of the places where as much fun as it is to goof around and play, that was actually a waste of time. Uh, what I'll do is I'll do a little bit of uh, information about what a three rotor is and what it isn't. This isn't a two rotor. Really? Yeah. So. Uh, for Jarrett, for people, not people like Jarrett, there's nobody like Jarrett, Jarrett's one of a kind. But uh, the telltale sign for figuring out this is a three rotor, super obscure fact here, but what you do is you count the number of exhaust housings. One, two, three. Uh, three corresponds to the number of rotors. Uh, if, if you're having a hard whoa, time with- Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, what's up, man? I thought this was a Tesla P100D electric motor. Oh, dude, this is a rotary engine. This is a rotary engine. This is a three rotor. <laughs> Sorry, we uh, we lose uh, sanity as time goes on. It's just Jared and I working in a garage. 
and this is how we entertain ourselves, then you guys somehow watch it and just like, why are these guys even remotely getting five views? This is, <laughs> this is horse shit. Although for the one person, there's one person watching this video who's like, where's the Lamborghini? Oh, it's right there. <laughs> but for that one person, a three rotor is in fact three rotors. And you will see three exhaust pipes, ultimately six intakes because there's primary and secondary, but there's three of everything. It's weird because when you look at this engine, you actually see a two rotor stuffed in it. And then they're like, oh my God, we need more bearings. So we need another iron between rotors that has extra stuff to keep the engine from splitting apart, which is coincidentally where my engine splits apart. And then they added another rotor. So it's kind of funny because it's way wider than you think it is. It's actually closer to 160 millimeters longer than a two rotor engine. 160 millimeters, putting that into American Freedom units, 160 divided by 25.4. Six and a half inches. So it's basically six and a half inches longer. So simple enough. That extra housing, which is 80 millimeters, right? 79 point whatever. Plus an extra rotor, which is uh, unsurprisingly the exact same width, 80 millimeters. So two sets of 80 millimeters, 160. Just to put that into inches, that maxes out right at six. So six and a half inches, there you go. There's the extra engine all right there. Uh, sadly, as we saw earlier in the video, it is 110 pounds heavier. Extra rotor, extra iron, which is a fat iron, so it's got also bearing inside of it. It's also got a rotor, <laughs> the rotor, housing, iron, extra crankshaft, or excuse me for the rotary guys, eccentric shaft material. Adds up very quickly, especially when this is made out of steel and so is the rotor. The housing's made out of aluminum for the most part, but you can see where the extra weight comes from. I will still say, and this isn't coming from a rotary fanboy, this is still a smaller package than a, what was that? <laughs> oh yeah, LS6. What? Stay over there. Is he talking shit? <laughs> yeah, what? You keep your eye on him, Jared. Uh, one of the mistakes I made, uh, rushing to get you guys content, which is really just an excuse, meaning I'm lazy, is Elliot busted his ass to put all of these ports on the exhaust manifold. Those are exhaust temp ports. So they're literally measuring the exhaust combustion temperature as soon as it leaves the engine. And a variance or a difference between one, two, and three can tell you whether or not they're running more lean or more rich compared to the other rotor, which means that you can make like rotor specific fuel trim. Instead of saying, hey, you know what? All three rotors get the same amount of fuel. They, they get different amount of air. They get different temperatures. Like this one is closer to this turbo uh, exhaust housing. Maybe this one gets hotter air. If it gets hotter air, hotter air means less dense air, which means you need less fuel. So there's things like that that change per rotor. And I made the mistake of not picking up my AEM EGT sensors. Not to say that that would have prevented this, but that would have definitely been one more tool of measurement that would have said, things are wrong, Rob. Things are not right. These special nuts that are for exhaust housing nuts are full of thread, and so they get really warm. See how, longer, how much longer they are? They, they get warm. Like, you have to be careful with those. This may come as no surprise, but the width of this engine compared to a two rotor is identical. Obviously, if you want to take into account the intake manifold, uh, still not very much wider. So there's no real difference there because the extra engine is length. That's really the only major difference. As you can tell on my three rotor, I've done a lot to make it a lot like an FD REW, which is REW is Japanese for twin turbo, even though that means not anything related to, why, why is this, it's 15, why are you doing this? I wish these were 14s, it's so weird that they're not. Well, you have a 15 in your hand, right? Right. It didn't work because it was too big. Right. Okay. So it must be a 14. But hey, this is what's going to blow your mind, Jared. 14? God damn it. <laughs> what the hell? It's okay. Oh my God. It's okay. I just wrench. I wrench more than you. So. You, you don't wrench, bro. What? There. Okay. To be fair, this nut is 15 not 14. Yeah, see? So, in order to been stripping stuff. <laughs> Look at that, that's what happens when you use a 15 mil and a 14 mil nut. 
I picked these up from Mazda Tricks, and if you've ever been to Mazda Tricks, which is kind of like a holy grail of rotaries, it is one of the dankest, oldest places on earth. It's like the crusty old guy that gets mad at you for not knowing the exact part number for a part that he's sold for 20 years. He's a nice guy, but uh, those are like $10 a piece or something like that. It's ridiculous. And it's not his expense, it's just literally the cost of being in the rotaries and getting the right parts and fasteners. That is why I understand the run to LS because it doesn't take just one guy. You don't. You can buy like the same part from 20 different manufacturers when it comes to V8s. Here it's like you gotta know a guy that knows a guy who sold these or, oh, you know what, you can use this kit instead of that kit because this engine was the only other year that came with that feature. That's how rotaries are and that is definitely not for everybody. It's definitely not for the majority of people. Those right there, these things are like 30 bucks a piece. All right, there you go. There is a three rotor in all of its glory. You can still smell the beautiful exhaust. So Jarrett wants me to film a new outro the video. You guys know I don't do outros. And in this case, oh my God, this engine's been worked on since other shots in this video. What the hell? Well, that's exactly what's gonna be happening in the next video. We're tearing into the motor. We're gonna see what was damaged. And yes, rebuild the three rotor. I am not touching the LS6 that is not going near that RX-7. This is, and it's getting rebuilt.